So lately I've been playing around with this Creality CR10 smart printer. And although it is a smart printer, it is lacking a few basic functionalities that you find in lower end printers. And I'm doing a full review video on this printer. So keep an eye out for that in the future. But in the meantime, uh, one of the features that I really wanted to get out of this printer to unlock its full capabilities and potential was to interface with it with a terminal window. So you can find no basic things like uh, its acceleration settings, jerk settings, and that sort of thing. And normally you would do that through a terminal interface. And with this printer, there's a USB port on the side, but that USB port is strictly dedicated to Creality compatible web cameras. So that's just to monitor your prints through the Creality Cloud app. If you wanna use something like an external host, uh, like uh, Octopi or Repetier host, something of that nature, plugging that uh, USB port, plugging USB into that USB port rather on the side is gonna do nothing because it's not actually directly connected to the main board. And there's a Creality Wi-Fi box that's built into this machine and that USB port goes to the Wi-Fi box, not the main board. So we're gonna figure out a way today how to interface with the main board and it's pretty easy. I'll walk you guys through that. And that's gonna allow you, like I said, to open up new possibilities for print hosts. So we're gonna be using Octopi and I'll show you guys how to set that up, a very basic setup, uh, such that you can use something like Prusa Slicer along with Octopi and you can get yourself the same functionality from those slicing softwares and print host softwares uh, that you would get from the Creality Cloud software. So you're not locked into that anymore. Um, just because I find that the Creality Cloud software also is a little bit limiting and you have a lot more potential and a lot more possibilities with the uh, Octopi software and Prusa Slicer. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that and let's get started. We can start by simply removing the two M3 screws holding in the USB port right on the side of the printer. And these are very easily accessible. Just unscrew them and then you can actually just push the USB port through using your finger or a screwdriver and do that carefully. We're not gonna reuse it, but you don't wanna break it. Next, we can carefully flip the printer onto its side to expose the underside where you're gonna find a whole bunch more of those M3 screws. So you're gonna to wanna to unscrew those, keeping track of which ones are short and which ones are long. There are three short ones, so maybe mark on the panel where they go as to not mix them up later. Obviously don't lose the hardware or you won't be able to get the panel back on later. Once the panel's off, don't rip it right off because there is a connector for the fan that you're gonna to wanna to carefully remove from the main board and then set everything aside. With the bottom of the printer now open, we can see what we're dealing with here and the Wi-Fi board is in the top left-hand corner of the screen. You're gonna be able to pull out the USB port and trace that wire back to the connector labeled camera on the Wi-Fi board. And so we're gonna disconnect that and we can completely remove that from our printer altogether since we're not gonna be reusing it. Under the Wi-Fi board, there's another board and it's got a connector on the right-hand side and that's labeled MCU and that's going to the main board. And that one there, you're gonna unplug very carefully. There might be glue on these connectors too, by the way, so you might wanna just carefully pick off the little bit of hot glue. And you're gonna replug that connector in to the connector called PC. And you'll see right beside that connector, there's also a very small, I believe it's a micro USB port. And I'll try and get a better shot of that. So lifting up the cables, you'll see that little micro USB port right there. So you're gonna to wanna to get a cable that is compatible with that style of micro USB, and you're gonna plug it directly into this board here. And once you get that plugged in, now you can route your USB cable through the hole in the side of the frame that would have been used for the camera USB module that we just removed. And if you're having trouble getting it through that opening, just also keep in mind that you can go the other way through the frame and put the smaller side connector in first in order to feed it through that hole. Now, if you don't wanna go through the side, you can go through the front of the printer. There's a little cutout in the sheet metal there that you could use for the USB cable. However, I just find it awkward to have a cable coming out the front of a device rather than the side or the back. I think this is much cleaner and much more convenient to use. And with the panel still off the bottom, also keep in mind that that Wi-Fi module has a little SD card in there that you can snag for your Raspberry Pi if you need one. So while the bottom case is open, you can grab that. Otherwise, just plug the fan connector back into its original position on the main board and then tilt your panel up into place and replace all the screws, fastening them down and locking the panel into place. And so now what we can do is we can test the communication with the printer. So I've opened up Repetier Host. I have the printer plugged in to one of the USB ports on my laptop. 
you can set up a printer profile and in this case the CR10 is going to use a baud rate of 115,000 and then you just hit connect and a bunch of information in the log window should show up about the printer and this will tell you that you have successfully connected to the printer and you'll see a bunch of parameters here show up from the firmware. So this is working really well so far. Now I'm going to head on up to the G code window here and type into the terminal M503 and that's for the settings from Marlin and a bunch of the printer settings are going to show up. So now we can take a look at settings such as the uh, firmware speeds and accelerations and jerk settings, uh, PID settings, all that sort of fun stuff, even including the list for the uh, mesh leveling data from the auto bed leveling system on this printer. So everything comes up because it is a Marlin based firmware. And so as would be expected with proper communication with this printer, you can view it and now we can also edit it in the memory. So if using the appropriate M commands, we can also go through and like I said, edit those settings and save them using the M500 command and then read them back with M503 to make sure that they took. And so this capability is going to be very handy in the future if you ever modify your printer, add a different hot end, want to run a PID auto tune, or want to change your e-steps for a different extruder. So this is great news that it's working. In order to wirelessly communicate with your 3D printer using OctoPi, you're going to need to get a Raspberry Pi board, as the name might suggest, and download the imaging tool from their website. And so this is the tool here where you can simply choose your operating system. In this case, we're gonna be choosing the OctoPi operating system. We're also gonna be choosing that SD card that we have plugged into the computer at this point. And I would go with at minimum an eight gig SD card for this task. You're gonna to wanna to hit Control Shift X and that's gonna bring up some extra options here where you can set things like the SSID and password for your Wi-Fi settings, and that's gonna burn it right to the image directly so you don't have to do any extra fiddling around. And as soon as you plug that Raspberry Pi in and turn the power on, it should fire up and connect directly to your Wi-Fi network. Like I said, you won't have to SSH into the Pi or do any sort of uh, fancy editing in Notepad or anything like that anymore. They made it super easy, and you're just gonna hit right this error or notification or whatever might come up just because it's uh, essentially reformatting that SD card so your computer is not going to recognize it anymore and once it's done it's going to come up and say that it's done then you can unplug that SD card plug it into your Raspberry Pi board right at the bottom then you can apply power to the board using the USB-C cable and then you can just plug your printer directly into the Raspberry Pi, turn your printer on. And in some cases you might notice that before the printer even, uh, the switch even comes on, your LCD screen might light up because it might be being powered from the Raspberry Pi. But then we can get into the OctoPrint settings because it should now be connected to your home network. Now in order to connect to the OctoPrint or OctoPi through your browser, you are gonna need to know its IP address and there's a few ways of doing this. The easiest way that I find is to just log right directly into your router and go to your device list and look for the Raspberry Pi or OctoPi and it'll tell you the IP address of that device. You can enter that IP address into the browser window in the address bar as seen on my screen here. And then the setup wizard will come up because it's the first time that we're running OctoPrint on this particular device. It's gonna ask you to go through a series of uh, setup options here, such as creating a username and password for access control, things like connectivity checks, and all that sort of thing. You can pretty much just choose all of the default settings unless you are a more advanced user and there is something, of course, that you want to change. Otherwise, all of the default settings are usually sufficient. It's also gonna ask you to name the printer and select the generic model that it's based on so you can just leave it at rep wrap and it's going to ask you some basic information about your printer like the shape of the bed where you want the origin set up the width depth and height of the build volume and if your nozzle homes off of the print bed so you can set up a custom bounding box there if you so wish and the access tab you can set up some of the machine limits 
uh, that you can use here in OctoPrint. And the last thing that you can set up is the hot end and extruders. So the nozzle diameter and the number of extruders. So in this case for my CR10 Smart, it's just a 0.4 nozzle and one uh, extruder. And we can finish that up and you can apply any updates if your system detects that your OctoPrint needs to be updated. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this update. It'll automatically reboot after that. And we'll come back into the uh, interface here for OctoPrint and we can connect to our printer. When connecting to the printer, if you know the serial baud rate, you can select it. If not, you can leave it on auto. Just hit connect and that should be it. As long as everything is set up correctly, you should now be successfully connected to your printer. And you can go ahead and look at the terminal window to make sure that information is being passed back and forth between the two. You can type in that M503 command again and double check that everything looks good when the uh, firmware information comes through. You can look at the control window and see if you have a camera, let's say hooked up to your Raspberry Pi, you should be able to see that webcam stream load. And you can test things out like turn on your heated bed or nozzle and make sure everything's working correctly. Getting Prusa Slicer to interface directly with OctoPrint such that you can upload G-code directly from Prusa Slicer into OctoPrint and print immediately is actually very easy. So assuming that you've already created a printer profile in Prusa Slicer for your printer, click the little gear icon right beside the printer name up there and this window is going to pop up where you can browse for your IP address associated with your OctoPrint or you can type it in manually. You're going to need an API key from OctoPrint. So open up the OctoPrint window, go to your user settings, you can click on application keys or just scroll down to the bottom, click that little refresh looking button that's gonna generate a key. You can copy it directly out of this window, go back into Prusa Slicer, and then in that API key field, you can just paste that directly in there, hit okay, and that's it, you're pretty much set up. So if you go back to your build plate and you slice up a file, once you're done slicing in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a little icon that you can click on and that is going to ask you to name the file so that's what's going to get uploaded directly into octoprint and there's a little checkbox there to start the print immediately if you so wish and then you hit that and you're pretty much ready to go so you can head on over to your printer and make sure everything is working and your print starts not surprisingly it works and the print starts and this whole setup makes slicing and printing so convenient after that print was done, I moved my printer into a more permanent location inside of a custom cabinet I built. I have a video on that. I'll put that link in the top right hand corner of the screen. And I also moved the Raspberry Pi into this nice looking case that I also made specifically for these OctoPrint applications. And I'll put that link to that video in the top right hand corner of the screen as well if you guys are interested in making one of those. So I hope you guys found this video useful and now that you're no longer tethered to the Quality Cloud Service uh, Network, you can unleash the full potential of your printer as well as your creativity on this platform. So keep an eye out for my future full review of this printer that's coming up soon. Be sure to like and subscribe to this video and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. Thanks guys.